Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. I hope all of you are doing absolutely fine and your preparation also is going right on track. I welcome you all to today's session of the daily quiz. Also reminding you, there is a great chance for all of you to have a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with our experts. All that you need to do is fill up the Google form whose link you will find in the description of the video. As soon as you fill up the form, one of our experts will get in touch with you to resolve all your queries about your UPSC preparation journey. Now let's begin with the first question on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to National Assessment and Accreditation Council, also known as the NAAC. Number one, if a higher education institution gets a score between 3.51 and 4, it gets an 8 plus plus grade. Second, a score between 3.26 and 3.50 gets an A plus grade and a score between 3.01 and 3.25 gets an A grade. Third, there are eight grades in total, including C for scored between 1.51 and 2, which means basic accreditation, and D for scored between 1.51 indicate below 1.51 rather, indicating unaccredited status. How many of these are correct? Now, it's an interesting question, also slightly tricky question because we usually do not read about the NAAC in so much detail. This is a kind of a rating system that the government of India had started a few years back. What used to happen was many magazines, many websites used to give their own ranking of colleges and universities. Many of them were paid, so students were deceited by it. So government thought, why not introduce our own ranking? And that is how the NAAC was introduced. This is how the ranking works. The answer here is C. All the three are absolutely correct. The reason why it is in the news is that the government is planning to overhaul this system. Government is saying, that as per the committee formed recently under ISO chairman Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, the government of India is planning to rehaul this system. So basically what they will do is they will introduce binary accreditation and maturity based graded levels by the end of 2024. Also, they will be given or the institutes will be given either accredited or not accredited tax. The current system is the one that we just discussed A, A plus, A double plus. Next question number two, consider the following statements with regards to ISRO's POEM, that is PSLV Orbital Experimental Module. Number one, it is a platform that will help in orbit or that will help perform in orbit experiments using the final and otherwise discarded stage of ISRO's workhorse, the PSLV. Second, it derives its power from solar panels mounted around the PS4 tank and the lithium ion battery. Third, the PSLV is a four stage rocket where the first three spent stages fall back into the ocean. The final stage after launching the satellite into the orbit ends up as a space shuttle. Now, as you know, PSLV is considered as ISRO's workhorse because most of the missions are successful. ISRO has mastered that technology. ISRO is now trying to make it even more useful and even more intelligent in the sense that ISRO wants to use the one last bit of technology that the PSLV has to offer. In that aspect, the POEM that is PSLV Orbital Experimental Module is a new initiative under which ISRO basically uses the discarded stage of the rocket and make sure that it can also be used. It derives its power from lithium ion and yes, PSLV is a four stage rocket. On the other hand, the GSLV is a three stage rocket. When you say four stage, three stage, that usually means different stages of fuel. So four stage rocket would start with solid fuel, then liquid fuel, then solid fuel, then liquid fuel. GSLV is different, so that is how it usually works out. The answer here is C, all the three statements are absolutely correct. The reason why we're discussing this is that POEM 3 has achieved all the payload objectives and will re-enter the earth once again after successful mission. So far, Three POEM platforms have been used in which ISRO has thrown a total of 21 experiments so far. Also, India has targeted setting a space station in the low Earth orbit by 2035. Do remember that information as well. Next question three. Consider the following missions to Mars with their respective nations. Maven by UK, Psyche by USA, Mariner 4 by USSR, Nozomi by China. Which of these are matched correctly with their countries? So Maven by UK, wrong, it is by USA. Psyche by US, yes. 
Mariner 4 is also actually a US mission only. Then Nozomi. Nozomi is by Japan. It was a failed mission out of these four. And there are a lot of other missions that have been sent to Mars. Most of them unsuccessful. Out of these, only the second one is correctly matched. First wrong, third wrong and fourth wrong. The answer here has to be A. I hope you got that one right. This is why we are discussing this. Study on Mars rover data has confirmed that yes, there are lake sediments on the planet. The data has been collected by NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. That is how we have now come to conclusion that yes, there used to be a lake on the Mars. Next question number four. Consider the following statements with regards to seaweed. Number one, it is a source of vitamins, minerals and fiber and can even be tasty. Second, large seaweeds form dense underwater forest known as kelp forest, which act as underwater nurseries for fish, snails and sea urchins. Third, seaweeds absorb the extra nutrients and balance out the ecosystem. Which of these are correct? Now it's a Tricky question again, there have been seaweed based questions by the UPSC asked in the prelims examination. All the three statements here are correct. The government of India is also planning to push the farmers towards cultivation of sea green, especially in the coastal states. That is why we are asking this question. The Union Minister of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying has chaired the first conference on promotion of seaweed cultivation at Gujarat. It's being seen as a method to generate or trade employment as well to the farmers. That is why the government of India is thinking of launching this mission and expanding the reach of this. Next is a previous year question from 2014. Recently, a series of uprisings of people referred to as Arab Spring originally started from. So Arab Spring again became very famous about 10 years back. It was an overthrow of a lot of dictator governments in the Middle East and in North Africa. Egypt, Lebanon, Syria and Tunisia. Again, where did it start? The answer here is Tunisia. It started with Tunisia and then it spread to other parts of the world as well, including Egypt, Lebanon as well. Since then, many countries have been unstable politically without a stable government such as Lebanon, Syria, again, still unstable. Still, the elected government has not been able to gather control of the entire country's territory. The answer thus is D. Next is a fact of the day and today I want to discuss about the WTO dispute resolution or dispute settlement mechanism. The reason why it is in the news is for a very long time, for many years, this has not been able to run. So basically WTO has a specific arm that is called WTO dispute settlement mechanism. When the two countries have an issue, they can appeal there and the issue will be resolved. The reason why it has not been able to work for many years is because of the US. The US has not been in favor of appointing the members again and thus this body has fallen down from its minimum required strength. Now once again the US had rejected the proposal to restart this. Now why is the US doing this? The US says that this body is unfair especially to them and that is why they don't want this body to work again. This appellate body was set up in 1995. It has a four year term and presides over the appeals in cases filed by the WTO members. So basically this authority or this settlement mechanism, it has the authority to establish panels which refer to cases of arbitration and other cases that are filed by the member countries. Each person can be reappointed for another four year term. So there can be two terms for which the person can serve. How does the appointment happen? Each person that is working here has to be an expert in law, international trade or these matters globally. They are required to be unaffiliated with any government. So if there is a member in this body who is an Indian, that person does not have to or should not rather vote as the Indian government tells. This has to be separate from their own government. Chairman is elected from amongst the member for a one year term and is responsible for the overall direction. The problem is if you look at this body, it had to reappoint its judges in 2017. But in December 2019, the number of judges in the court fell below three. Now three is the minimum basic number required. Since the number of judges fell below three, there had to be new judges appointed again, but the US has not allowed that to happen. 
US says that no, it is unfair, it is not fair to us, it favors some other country, so we will not allow this to function. Over 600 cases have reached this body and only 350 of them have been resolved. Also, the ruling has to be given within the 90 day time period, which is also something that they have not been able to maintain only because the US has used its immense power at the global platform once again, again, highlighting how dangerous a monopoly of power can be. This brings us to the end of today's discussion of the daily quiz. Have a good day ahead. Bye bye. Jai Hind.